Hi, I'm Leif. Today we're looking at the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4. The Watch 4 comes in two flavors, the regular Watch 4, which is a continuation of the Galaxy Active 1 and 2 watches, and the Galaxy 4 Classic, which is a continuation of the original Galaxy and the Galaxy Watch 3. The main difference between the two is that the Classic has a physical rotating bezel around the outside, which can be used for navigation. The regular Watch 4 has a touch bezel around the outside, and both watches have touch screens, so you can also use swiping and tapping for navigation. The Classic is also made out of stainless steel, whereas the regular Watch 4 is made out of aluminum. Both the Watch 4 and the Watch 4 Classic come in two sizes, 40mm and 44mm for the regular Watch 4. The Watch 4 Classic comes in 42mm and 46mm. For all four models, you have the choice of Bluetooth only or LTE. When you throw in all the different color options, there's a lot of different versions of the Watch 4 to choose from. If you're having trouble deciding which one is right for you, I've made another guide where I look at all of the different options and I extensively test out the batteries, so check that out. All four versions have the exact same processor, RAM, and storage. The smaller versions have a smaller battery and a smaller screen with lower resolution compared to the larger versions. My previous watch was the Galaxy Active 2. And despite being waterproof, you really shouldn't swim in the ocean with these watches, which is what my wife told me, and I didn't listen. Sorry, honey. <laughs> So coming from that watch, I'm really appreciating the faster processor and increased storage space. Until now, the Galaxy watches have used Samsung's own Tizen OS. On the Watch 4, Samsung has moved away from Tizen to Google's Wear OS 3. It's a custom Samsung Google version, so it looks a lot like Tizen, but now we have access to third-party and Google apps. The stock watch is mostly running Samsung apps, no surprise there, but we have access to the Play Store and we can download apps like Google Pay, Strava, Gboard, and there's lots to choose from. For music, we have Spotify and YouTube Music, both of which allow you to download music for playback when you're not around your phone or Wi-Fi. I use this a lot when I go running and I don't want to carry my phone. You can also download music directly to your phone using the Samsung wearable app. I wish there was an Amazon Music app available as I have an Amazon Music account, but sadly it's not available yet. So with Wear OS 3, is the Galaxy Watch 4 a great smartwatch for all Android users? Well, kind of. It's a step in the right direction, but like previous Samsung Galaxy watches, you need Samsung apps to use the watch. Works really well if you have a Samsung phone. If you have any other Android phone, then you'll need to install the Samsung wearable app and Samsung Health. With these two apps installed, you get most of the functionality of the Watch 4 on non-Samsung phones. ECG and blood pressure monitoring require the Health Monitor app, which is only available on Samsung phones. Also, if you live in the United States, then blood pressure monitoring is not available at all, even if you have a Samsung phone. There are ways around this using a hacked version of Health Monitor. If you own an iPhone, you're out of luck. Unlike previous versions of the Galaxy Watch, the Watch 4 doesn't work with an iPhone at all. So if you have an iPhone, you can stop watching now and don't buy this watch. There are a lot of nice stock watch faces available. There's also several apps available which give you access to loads of custom watch faces. And they look really great because the display is very nice. It's bright and it's easy to read. By default, the watch face turns off after a little while and it turns back on when you raise your wrist. There's also an option to keep the screen on all the time with always on display. This does of course drain your battery a little faster. Most of the negative comments I've read have to do with the battery in the Watch 4. The Samsung website says 40 hours of battery runtime on all models, but I didn't find that to be the case. 
I did some fairly extensive battery testing on all four variants of this watch, which you can check out in my comparison video. Basically, the smaller sized watches have a smaller battery. I was able to get through a full day and night, but in the morning it was pretty close to dead. If you're all right with charging your watch every day, then the smaller size should be fine. I found the larger sized watches to have significantly more battery life. I was usually able to get through two days and two nights before needing to recharge. This is going to vary quite a bit depending on how you use your watch. If you regularly go on 30 mile runs while listening to music, your battery is probably going to drain pretty fast and you're going to want to go with the larger watch. And I wonder if the move to Wear OS 3 has contributed to shorter battery life. Overall, I think the battery life is going to be acceptable for most people. This watch has a new body composition feature. To use it, you have to put two fingers on the side buttons. After a little while, it will tell you your body composition metrics. I haven't used this enough to really know how accurate it is, but from what I've been able to tell so far, it doesn't seem to be super accurate, as the metrics seem to fluctuate a lot more than I think they should. Still, it's a neat feature, and maybe they'll improve it in the future. There's also sleep tracking. In addition to telling you when you were asleep and how well you slept, it can now also tell you your blood oxygen levels, and it even has snore detection. To use snore detection, you have to sleep with your phone near you, as it uses the phone's microphone to record your snoring. The physical bezel on the Classic feels really nice, and it's great for scrolling through menus. Of course, you can also use the touchscreen to navigate. The regular Watch 4 has a virtual bezel around the outside, which works most of the time, but I found it doesn't always register for me. I definitely prefer the physical bezel, but the virtual bezel is adequate. I found the bezel to be really useful in certain apps. For instance, in the timer app, you can use the bezel to adjust the time. You can adjust it with the touchscreen, but I found it easier and more natural to do it with the bezel. Swiping down takes you to the quick settings panel, which has a number of useful functions. If I'm wearing the watch to bed, I find the bedtime mode to be really useful. It's slightly different from do not disturb. It silences system sounds and notifications other than your alarm. It turns off the always on display, stops the automatic screen wake up when you lift your wrist or turn your wrist, and it puts the screen into a dark mode. You can turn off always on display here. There's a useful flashlight button, and you can use the bezel or the screen to adjust the brightness. You can turn on power saving mode here. I tend to misplace my phone quite a bit, so one of the most useful apps for me is the Find My Phone feature, which I use quite a bit. There's a lot of other useful functions in the Quick Panel, and you can customize it however you want. I use the built-in running app quite a bit. I just tap on it to start, and then you see your time, distance, pace, and heart rate. This can be customized however you want. You can also swipe up to get more metrics. I pretty much always listen to music while I'm running, so I find the ability to swipe left to get to your music player really, really useful. The media player is another place I've found the bezel to be really helpful. Adjusting the volume with the bezel, particularly the physical bezel, is way, way easier than trying to do it with the touchscreen while running. The main reason I got a smartwatch was for the fitness features. I run several times a week, and I wanted a watch that could track my running as well as play music while I'm running. The Active 2 did a fairly good job of this, and I feel like the Watch 4 is even better. It has a lot more storage for playing music, and with Wear OS 3, there are a lot more fitness apps available. Overall, I found the fitness metrics to be a little unreliable, but still useful. I know my mileage wasn't quite right. Heart rate tracking seems to work fairly well, but occasionally it would stop tracking for me. If your main reason for buying a watch is for fitness purposes, you may want to check out the Garmin watches, as I think they are more reliable for the purposes of tracking fitness metrics. 
But if you want a smartwatch that can run a whole bunch of different apps and is still fairly good for tracking fitness metrics, then I think the Watch 4 is a pretty good choice. I find step tracking to be a useful metric. I don't think it's super reliable, but it does give me some motivation to move around. On those days where I'm working on my computer a lot, I still want to reach my step count, so I find myself moving around a lot more than I probably would have otherwise. Overall, I think the Watch 4 is a really good smartwatch. If you already have a Samsung phone, it pairs really well with it. Even without a Samsung phone, I can definitely say that this is without a doubt the best Wear OS 3 watch available right now. And it's also the only Wear OS 3 watch available right now. It's definitely not perfect, but I think it's an improvement over previous generations of Galaxy watches. It's packed with features, and it has access to a lot of apps. The battery life's not incredible, but for me, it's adequate. I find myself wearing this watch a lot more than I wore my Active 2, and overall, I'm really enjoying the watch. I hope you found this review enjoyable and useful, and thank you so much for watching. Feel free to leave some comments below, and please subscribe.